Ladies and gents, one more CGV XL, and this is the terrifying true scale of nuclear weapons by the channel Real Life Lore. Nuclear weapons have come a long way and come in all type of different sizes. Some are relatively small while others are enormous, so big they boggle the mind at what they can be capable of. This video analyzes the size and impacts of various different nuclear devices. Yeah, Real Life Lore thrives at the topics like this, so this is gonna be fun. Yeah, we saw the video off from Kuzgazat. What if we detonated all nuclear bombs at one? Then we saw what if we detonated a nuclear weapon at the moon? Then, you know, yeah, it's lots of bomb topics there. Because that has a lots of videos, so obviously there's gonna be lots of bomb topics, but it was fun. Black hole bombs and different type of bomb. But yeah, nuclear weapons, the most powerful device we have. Uh, people always, you know, think that if alien comes, their technology would be so advanced. They have such an advanced weapon that we would be like chimps with the rocks and sticks and stones and things like that. And to that I say, nothing is more powerful in the entire universe than nuclear fusion. That is how the stars work. That is the core energy of the entire universe. And thermonuclear weapons are just there. Nuclear fusion. So whenever you detonate a nuclear fusion like hydrogen bomb, that's basically a small sun that you created. Nothing can be more powerful than that. No weapon can be more powerful than that. So we might not be an advanced species, let's just say compared to the alien if there, there are any out there, intelligent alien. We might not be as intelligent as they are, but we definitely mastered the weapon at the highest scale. Because it doesn't matter how intelligent aliens are, if, if you throw a hydrogen bomb at them, they are done. Doesn't matter what technology they have, doesn't matter what metal or whatever they're using, doesn't matter what advanced ships they have, they are screwed. So if alien comes and they are hostile, all we need to do is just throw a hydrogen bomb at them and you know, that's good. That's going to be war, but at least we are not going to be so backwards that they're just gonna come and enslave us. I hate it when I was saying that like, we're gonna be enslaved, we, we can't do nothing. Really, we have a hydrogen bomb, what you talking about? So yeah, uh, I think, you know, uh, biggest bomb the US had detonated is Castle Bravo, I think. You know, I saw a real life lore video I saw about, you know, uh, storing nuclear waste that says that, you know, it was even bigger uh, than they even they thought. And the biggest bomb that ever detonated was Tsar Bomba by the Russia, obviously these Russians. And that was so powerful that people felt earthquake in Europe. Earthquake tech fear. I don't know if it was earthquake, but they felt, you know, ground shaking all the way in Europe. And they, you know, they detonated in, I think, in the north of Russia, I don't know, some place they detonated. So it was far away from Europe. So yeah, this is gonna be fun. This is a real life lore video. It might get blocked, so I have to put checkered box there. But if, if it bugs you too much, you know, so run a real original video side by side, I guess. And if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the reaction today. There's a link in the description. There are other real life lore videos too. I'd, you know, reacted to it's there somewhere. Check out the cast for the different playlists like, you know, Internet Students, CGP Grey, you know, Salmonella, let me know, things like that. And I should create a real life lore playlist too. And also cross that. I've directed to enough videos already. But yeah. Let's watch this one. Ever since the first nuclear weapons test in the deserts of New Mexico and the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, nuclear weapons have become significantly more powerful. Since the first test in New Mexico by the United States in 1945, 2,475 nuclear weapons have been detonated across the globe. Over 85% of those detonations have come from only two countries, however, the United States and the former Soviet <laughs> no Union. Shit. Oh my god, this reminds me, I still can't get over that. There was a black and white photos of people walking around in, you know, Las Vegas and in the distance you could see the mushroom clouds because they were testing nuclear weapons in Nevada desert, just, you know, close to the Las Vegas. First of all, Nevada is massive. Why test it near Las Vegas where you can see it from Las Vegas? If you detonate far away, you can't see the, you know, cloud from Las Vegas. So why that's not close to it? I don't know. Maybe they didn't. They had no idea about the all the nuclear fallout it could it could cause. As soon as they realized, they panicked. I guess. Only two of those thousands of detonations were ever used in a war, the ones dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki during World War II by the United States. But those bombs were very small compared to modern weaponry. The Hiroshima bomb produced an explosion of 15 kilotons, or 15,000 tons worth of TNT. The bomb dropped on Nagasaki had an explosion of yeah, 21 kilotons, but how much bigger can nuclear weapons possibly get? The These are nothing. These are fission bombs. Much, much bigger. The largest nuclear weapon currently in the United States. Yeah, these are just fission uh, bombs. 
atom bombs power of atom apparently uh, afterwards they know they uh, perfected thermonuclear bombs these things are hard to perfect because to trigger your you know basically you you, sh- you p- have to you know construct thermonuclear bomb really perfectly otherwise there's a chance it won't trigger because in that as a fuse there's a small nuclear fission bomb just like the atom bomb there's a small fission bomb to provide heat because you need heat for you know hydrogen bomb like you know nuclear fusion fusion to start so there's a small fission bomb that explodes and then the heat from it you know detonates the fusion main bomb and basically fission bomb is nothing compared to the fusion bomb nuclear fusion fusing of you know fusing of atoms is just it produces so much energy that fission bombs are nothing compared to it but you know it's not easy to perfect that that's why you know north korea was saying we have hydrogen bomb too now people like people were skeptic like yeah okay how do you, how do you master that and then they say that they detonated it and people in japan or somewhere you know check the you know uh, basically you know effects from it like how powerful it was and it was no powerful than any fission bomb so people like hey, they're just saying it they don't have hydrogen bomb but yeah, hydrogen bombs are ridiculously powerful. The state's arsenal is the B-83, which can produce a blast of 1.2 megatons. To understand the scale from here out, one megaton is equal to one million tons of TNT, yeah. and that is equal to 1,000 kilotons. Remember that the Hiroshima blast was just 15 kilotons, so that means... Yeah, basically tons means thousands of this three zero. A megaton, so you know, one million mega giga means one billion things like that. Tons, so that means that the B 83 produces a blast 80 times more powerful than that. What I've been showing on this scale is only the size of the mushroom cloud that the bombs produced. So, to further add to the scale, we're going to place the size of Mount Everest here and the average altitude of a commercial airliner that you would normally fly on here. So, the Castle Bravo bomb is the largest nuclear weapon ever tested by the United States. It produced a blast of 50. All right, I'm not gonna lie, that is scary shit. First of all, you see Hiroshima and Nagasaki, you don't have the scale to think how big that cloud is. Obviously, it's gonna be big, but when you put Mount Everest in the side of it, and then even show the Everest commercial airline altitude and show the B-83 bomb, holy shit, when it explodes. The ca- oh, look at the Castle Bravo. And that's not even the biggest bomb that was ever detonated, it's Zara Bomba. Now look at how small Hiroshima and Nagasaki look in front of that. Fission bombs are extremely small compared to the... These are, these are hydrogen bombs now. 15 megatons, or about 1,000 times the scale of Hiroshima. But even that pales in comparison to the largest nuclear weapon ever detonated. In October 1961, the Soviet Union created the largest man-made explosion ever in human history when they detonated this device, known as the Tsar <laughs> Bomba, here over this territory yeah, known as Novaya Zemlya. The bomb detonated with an astounding force of 50 megatons, or about 3,333 Hiroshima blasts. It was so powerful that it almost destroyed much. the plane that dropped it, shattered windows as far away as Norway and Finland, and the shock waves created by the bomb circled around the entire Earth three whoa, times. Whoa, what? It almost destroyed the plane that dropped it, shattered windows as far away as Norway and. It shattered windows all the way to Norway. What the hell? Did they check if anybody's around this area somewhere? Because his shockwave can shatter windows all the way to Norway, anybody here is screwed. I'm pretty sure it caused somewhat of a tsunami too. God damn, that's big. And Finland, and the shockwaves created by the bomb circled around the entire Earth three times. But this test was actually just a <laughs> scaled down version of what was theoretically possible. Yeah, I think after Zarbomb, everybody like, okay, you know what, even for us this is way too much. Let's, let's tone down nuclear weapons from now on. Well, Although never tested, the Soviets did have plans to create a bomb that would be twice as powerful as even the Tsar Bomba. A bomb so powerful that it would have produced a mind-boggling 100 megaton blast. Or about 6,666 Hiroshima blasts altogether. To get another sense of scale, let's imagine that Times Square in New York City would be the epicenter of these blasts. You can test this stuff out yourself on the website NukeMap after watching this video. I'll provide a link for it after the end, but let's see the results first. First off, we're going to show the size of this detonation, which was caused by the recent North Korean test in 2013. Following this, here is the size of the Hiroshima detonation, which isn't really that much bigger, but let's move on to the B-83 bomb that we were talking about. Okay, what? North Korea's bomb is smaller than Hiroshima bomb? Come on. As you can see, it would affect a much larger area That's than the Hiroshima bomb. 
But moving on past that to the Castle Bravo test, we can see how it truly dwarfs everything before it. But even that blast is incredibly tiny when we move on towards the Tsar Bomba as seen here. And then finally for our scale, God we move on to damn. how large the blast from the theoretical 100 megaton version of the Tsar Bomba would be. The blast would be so powerful, this is what the blast radius would look like if Back you were up, I didn't even read the names before. How large the Okay, so Tsar Bomba, if detonated in Manhattan, people get hurt in New Jersey and more than that. Blast I can't read the, the name. 100 megaton version of the Tsar Bomba would be. The blast would be so... Yeah, people in Philadelphia would see it and feel it. I'm pre pretty sure shockwaves would destroy lots of homes there too. If, if, if the Tsar Bomba can, you know, destroy windows all the way to Norway, I'm pretty sure Phil Philadelphia screwed too. Powerful. This is what the blast radius would look like if you were observing it from the International Space Station. So the question then becomes, should any of this really worry you? How many nuclear weapons exist today anyway? I'm pretty sure if anybody <laughs> from, you know, International Space Station is exactly top of that, they would try to see if there is an engine in International Space Station to run away. <laughs> well, in total, there are estimated to be around 15,600 nuclear weapons in the world currently, enough to destroy the entire planet dozens of times over. But only nine countries control that stockpile, and 92% of those weapons are controlled by only the United States and Russia. Russia. The other 8% of the global nuclear arsenal is controlled in descending order of numbers by France, China, the United Kingdom, Pakistan, India, Israel, and North Korea. Is I'm pretty sure during the Cold War time this number was pretty high. This number, I think it was in more, I think 10, 15, even 20,000 per country or something. They decreased it a lot throughout this. That's a good news at least. Is it a good news? Whether it's, you know, 6,000 or 60,000, it's already too much. 60,000 is just overkill. Even 6,000 is enough to kill the planet lots of times. Israel and North Korea. Israel is, however, highly secretive about its nuclear program and has never publicly confirmed nor denied the existence of their nukes. It's just one of those things where everybody knows that they have them, but nobody really comes out and says so. Unless your name happens to be Mordecai Vanunu, a man who did reveal details about Israel's nuclear program and spent 18 years in prison, including over 11 years in solitary confinement. Also interesting to note, South Africa used to be in possession of six nuclear weapons. I don't understand the, the, the Trump's mentality behind this. He canceled the deal. Before the deal, you know, you could uh, basically, you know, people, Americans can go to there and check if they're doing anything with the uranium or anything. And Trump was like, you know, Trump in the Trump's head, it was basically like, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but in, in his mind, it was basically like they're making the bomb and suddenly they would sweep everything under the rug before anybody comes and check. I mean, if there, if there was uranium there, you know, there would be traces of it, traces of it there for thousands of years. You can't hide it. So I don't understand that why he canceled that deal. Now they can make bomb without anybody doing anything about it. I mean, now Americans can go there and check. I'm pretty sure it's that. I don't know much detail about that. This is what I know so far because the past apartheid regime was afraid of the 79% of the population that couldn't vote and communists trying to overthrow their government. But they eventually agreed to dismantle all of them, which makes South Africa the only country to ever acquire nuclear weapons and then voluntarily get rid of them. Well, unless you don't count Ukraine, Belarus, or Kazakhstan, which all had nuclear weapons for a brief amount of time after they declared their independence from the Soviet yes. Union in 1991. Ukraine is particularly awkward because after their independence, they found themselves in possession of over 5,000 thousand nuclear weapons, which would make Ukraine for a brief period the world's third largest nuclear power and probably one of the most powerful countries on earth as a result. They agreed to hand them all over to Russia in exchange for a- <laughs> as, as soon as independence happened, they're like, oh, what is this? 5,000 nukes? Oh, hell yes. <laughs> everybody, everybody back up, you see our nuclear weapons. <laughs> super serious promise that nobody would violate their territory or borders in the future, and we all know how that turned out. Yeah. <laughs> As a result of that happening, it's doubtful that other countries would be thrilled to ever give up their nuclear weapons in the future, but leave your thoughts and comments below about how you feel one way or the other. I yeah, I feel like, you know, uh, I'm mature enough to think that, you know, as far as human, uh, basically, mentality goes, human nature is, everybody holding hands, singing Kumbaya, it's not never gonna work. So, you know, hoping that everybody says no to nuclear weapons and eventually one day nuclear weapon will disappear, that's never going to happen. Never. So I guess this is the best is gonna happen. I don't know. 
But yeah, that was a true terrifying scale of nuclear weapons. All right, people, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the reaction under this link in the description. Check out the cards for the playlist. Check out the end cards. And if you want to react to any video, comment down. Even if I don't, you know, reply, I'll eventually react to it. And yeah, I'll see you next time.